Hello, boys and girls, and all you beautiful non-binary individuals. Welcome to That Podcast About Dancing with me, Cisco. Today I'm joined by Mark Losper, also known as Shabugan, a true shuffle OG from Sydney, Australia, who you may recognize from old videos like The Shabugan Show or That Running Man Tutorial, the one with the triangle in it. The next 90 minutes are packed with nonstop knowledge, advice, and unique thoughts on today's shuffle scene from someone who has the perspective of having been present for 15 years of shuffling's evolution. So please, buckle up and enjoy this wide-ranging conversation with Mark. Hello and welcome. Howdy. What's going on? Having a good day today? Yeah, it's not too bad. Had a job interview. I didn't train wreck it. It's okay. <laughs> what about you? Nice. Yeah, I uh, I ended up working all weekend, so I'm feeling good now. I'm getting into my, my relaxing zone. Okay. So just to start off, let everybody know like what your name is where you're from, and um, how long you've been shuffling for. Um, my name is Mark Callsign Shabugan. <laughs> um, I've been shuffling for a really long time, probably like 13 or 15 years or something like that. Um, I'm from Australia. I'm from Sydney. So unfortunately not Melbourne, the home of all of this, but close enough. Um. Yeah, I don't have more to say about my origin story. Probably when it- it's interesting because I know shufflers right now that are like fourteen years old, and you've been shuffling for fourteen years, so that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it doesn't make me feel old at all. Thanks for that. <laughs> really appreciate it. You're you're welcome. <laughs> Just trying to keep things in perspective here. Yeah, I, I've shuffled for longer than some current rockers have been alive. That's something, I guess. <laughs> um, I should probably put this out there right now for anyone listening. Um, so I'm fairly low key in general. Um, maybe when we start talking about rocking, I might come alive a little bit. But in general, actually, hell, there's like footage of me online. There's a fucking talk show that I used to hold, host. Sorry, I should probably not swear. Um, cause, yeah. Swear as much as you want. All right. I mean, that's an open invitation. I'm probably going to take it. Um, (laughs) Don't hold back. Yeah. There's footage of me online. I used to have a shuffling talk show, which is exactly as ridiculous as it sounds. Um, (laughs) Hey, that's rude. What what do you think we're doing right now? I mean, that didn't click to me until you just said it. So I don't know. I feel like ours was more ridiculous, but maybe we'll get into that over time. Wait, I want to know more about this shuffling talk show oh, that you had. Was Lord. this the Shibugan show? Yes, it was the Shibugan show. So I didn't name it. I want to put that out there, um, okay. like, immediately. Because I definitely would not have named a show after myself. That's just about <laughs> the most ridiculous thing I can imagine. You know, if we call this the Cisco Disco show, then maybe it'll be all right. Um, but the... I don't know. It was me and... Um, Len from We Dance Hard, um, and Hiltzy. These are names that um, people who are into sort of old shuffling will probably know. Um, and Brenton, what did people call him? Oh, yeah, Splinter. I mean, always, no, he was Brenton when he was shuffling. He's now Splinter as a hard dance DJ, raw style DJ, what, whatever he makes now. That's it's, cool. It's been a while. Um, 
so yeah we just had this show where we would talk about various things to do with shuffling it was kind of a monthly deal um i think it's not entirely similar to this because it was more sort of like topics that were topics that we found interesting not necessarily kind of like how to stuff um but stuff like i mean we did (laughs) um there was a russian shuffler called tim or t1m um so we did a topic of is t1m or tim the best shuffler in the world funnily enough we had a resounding no on that um and then i don't know just just various things um is shuffling dead was our first topic Funnily enough, we all said yes, which makes that was your first topic for like the beginning of your whole show. Yeah, because I mean, it was to place it was to place things in a really particular context, um, which is something we can get into, I guess. Um, yeah. So, I think shuffling, as as I interacted with it, um, is very much not alive. Like, it's certainly it's been a while since I've been to a club mainly because I don't like the music that gets played most of the time. But um, the the times when I was going out to clubs, it was like, you know, 20 or 30 people that were all rockers. And you would just get to a point where there would just be like this cluster of people that would all be rocking at around the same time. And that's not something that is as active now, like the, the way that shuffling lives is kind of online and, you know, at these meetup events that I still kind of have questions about most of the time. Um, it's not really shuffling as I know it anymore. Now that's not to say it's bad or it's good. It's not really a value value judgment at all. Um, but I think that the, the particular way that all of my community kind of interacted with it is very much gone um hopefully it can come back at some point or maybe it's alive somewhere else and i'm just not aware of it um you know it's kind of what all of this activity now is about so what would you highlight as some of the major differences between what the community was like back then versus what you're um, noticing in it today i mean how long have you got (laughs) Um, so <laughs> at least three of these, least, okay. so it could be a while. Fair enough. Um, it's very, very different. Um, I think like the first thing that sort of, um, becomes really clear to me is like the way that people learn is really different now. Um, so like shuffling, let's say like, so I have kind of a, it's the easiest way of putting this. I have sort of an end like a start date, um, which is, let's say like 2007. I mean, I was shuffling before that, but my my sort of entry into the shuffling community is around 2007. Um, And 2006 is really when shuffling changed into something that approximates what shuffling is now. So, it's basically like shuffling YouTube begins in 2006 thereabouts. Um, it's when you have things like shuffling.com that have tutorials out. We dance hard as around with a few tutorials of this sort of like together. Um, 2006, 2007 is kind of when melbshuffle.com starts and sort of the, um, the underage portion of shuffling really starts to begin. Um, prior to that shuffling was this thing that was kind of like, I don't want to romanticize it, but the words I would use would be handed down. So you kind of just get like, I learned from a hippie, just like a mate of mine who was really into sort of like hippie spirituality and all this kind of stuff. And he just loved dancing. And prior to that, I was a metalhead. Um, I, I listen to kind of all my brother's thrash music. Like, you know, I play guitar, like all of those sorts of things. And, you know, I had this, let's say a come to Jesus moment with just electronic music where I heard 
um, Daft Punk's Aerodynamic one night. And I was just like, what the hell is this? I've never heard this before. Um, Because my brother hated electronic music. And, you know, you are sort of like the closest approximation of five people, you know. And so I then hated electronic music. And I heard this Daft Punk song. I was like, this is insane. I've never heard anything like this before. And so I started to then get more into electronic music and I got into breaks and all of this kind of stuff. So early Adam Freeland music and things like that. And he just used to dance to it. And I thought, this is really interesting as a person that has never done this at all. I'd never been to a nightclub, never done any of this kind of stuff. And then for anyone from Sydney out there, um, I went to Chinese Laundry one night, um, which is just this really dingy dance club um, in the middle of Sydney that played, it was really famous for playing breaks music and it was kind of one of the three scenes that breaks was still alive. Um, and I went there and I just saw people dancing and I was like, this is awesome. Like, I can't believe that this is a thing that I've just never had anything to do with before. And cause I'm somewhat of an obsessive personality. I'm like, well, I'm going to start dancing. I might as well get good. Um, and so I started to like learn all this stuff and then I started to find shuffling.com and some of these tutorials. And, you know, there's a really famous tutorial by big Milan that probably loads and loads and loads and loads of people have watched. Um, so I watched those tutorials and I, I started to learn and then started to get more involved with people from shuffling.com and then came in out of this sort of breaks and like breaks and electro and all that kind of stuff and started dancing to more early hard style um, and hard dance. And then that's kind of really where shuffling lived for the longest period of time. Um, but yeah, the early sort of way that people learned to shuffle and even kind of into 2007 and 2008, it was a much more in-person interaction that was involved in it. It was like, you know, you'd be dancing and someone would watch and you're just like, Hey, you're fucking up or Hey, do this. I think this is cool. This is bad. You know, there's a bunch of like young men, but also like a bunch of young women as well. So, but like a lot of that kind of like shit talking that comes along with the community of friends. It's like, you suck, be better type stuff. And you would learn a lot by osmosis just being around that many people who are just good. And you would just watch them and be like, Hey, I really like that move. I'm going to try it. I'll put my own spin on it. Um, and so that's where a lot of shuffling learning happened. And I don't think that that exists now, or if it does exist, it's much, 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 much less prevalent. Um, I think a lot of the learning now is through a lot of tutorials on YouTube a lot of which are bad. Um, and I know that we're probably going to talk about that at some point. Um, this is not a slight on anyone that has made a tutorial. Um, I know you make tutorials. I've watched them. They're some of the better tutorials that are out there. But, um, yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, apparently, <laughs> apparently my word means something according to, like, random people on Reddit, which, again, is a thing I find really funny. Um but yeah, it's, I think that's the main thing, just that, that difference of, there's a really huge difference between in person and on YouTube. I think some of it can be bridged in ways that people aren't really doing. Um, but there is certainly something to being around a group of people that are all rocking, like besides the fact that it feels really good. Um, there's also the fact that there's just, there's more you gain out of seeing someone in person, like. I'll put it this way. Every one of your, if we talk about all of the idols that I came up with, so to speak, so Hiltzy and Brenton and Oscar and all of those guys, every single person that was once a shuffling God, none of them look as good on camera as they did for real. Like not, I have none of them. It's not even, it's ridiculous how different it is. Um, and that's even, like even good videos. Like I watch good, I watch videos I was there for and I'm like, that looks way better in person. Um, 
so yeah, there's certainly something to the in-person um, part of shuffling that I think is missing now. Yeah, I just kind of want to bounce back to one thing that you were saying earlier about how when you're in the group scenario like that, you basically have the ability to get feedback in real time from people that are watching you. And then you can, you know, keep trying and keep getting feedback. And I think that's one thing that's really missing from the culture today, because it is so heavily based in social media. And social media kind of encourages us to have this transactional relationship with each other where we want somebody to say something nice to us and so we are only going to say something nice to somebody else and so I see a real lack of genuine constructive feedback and constructive criticism because everybody only wants to be positive or only tolerates positivity from each other online and I think that's detrimental. So let me find the reddit post that I made um, it's a while ago now. And I think that this is really anodyne, um, in terms of feedback. Um, it has a minus two in terms of karma. Now I'm going to put this out there. I don't care about karma. Neither should you. <laughs> no one should give a shit about this at all. It means nothing. Um, but, um, I think the fact that something like this was downloaded, um, says something. And look, I am more than willing to sort of yeah here we go i'm more than willing to um cop to the fact that my tone isn't always super positive um but here here was the post so this was a response to just someone that was dancing at a rave and i'm like being on time and not missing the drop puts you in the top one percent of videos i've watched today well done spin needs a little work but overall this is pretty good shit and that's a minus three. And then that got downvoted. Yeah. And then the person responded and said, thank you. I know my shuffling isn't the best here, yada, yada. And I responded back to that. And this is a zero. So somebody downvoted this or multiple people updated and then multiple people downvoted. Don't get down on yourself. I checked a few of your other videos. You're doing pretty well. Strong grasp of the fundamentals. Looks like you've got a bit of variation depending on where you depending on what you're dancing to, decent control of the arms, all good so far. You're coming up to the point where you can really take your style in a lot of different directions. This is the exciting part. Have fun with it. That's a zero. Now, again, with the caveat of I and everyone else should not give a fuck about karma on Reddit. It does not mean anything. It's just a number. I think that statement having making someone feel negative about uh, making someone feel negative enough to downvote that statement says something about the way that people deal with each other on a forum that is supposed to be about improvement. Um, at the end of the day, I don't see the point of posting a video. If all it is you want to gain from it is look how sick I am. Like who cares? That that I'm not sure why that should matter to anybody. Like I'm not sure why it should matter to you. I'm not sure why it should matter to the person that's posting. It's just whatever. I was reading a I was reading a thread on R slash cutting shapes, which is a forum I am on. I don't really post a lot there, and I'm sure that cutting shapes is going to come up in this conversation. But I was reading a post where someone was talking about. Um, should I dance to the beat? And I have um, very much um, summarized this. Like there was, a, was basically it's just a person going, you know, whenever I watch my shuffling back, it feels too slow. Um, what should I be dancing to? Should I be dancing to the beat? Something else. And like my answer to that question is, well, yeah, of course you should. It's, it's a very strange question to like, me. Yeah. As a question, that's, backwards in my view <laughs> like this and look this is no disrespect to the person asking the question because look if you don't know you don't know yeah. um but yeah the answer to that's really simple for me which is yeah of course you should dance to the beat because that's what dancing is like it's literally in the definition of it if you look up the word dancing i mean it references the word rhythm and you know rhythm is king music like it it doesn't exist without it the answers to this question were effectively like, 
variously worded versions of do what you want. And it's like, okay, then what was the point of asking the question? And what was the point of answering the question? If at the end of the day, the answer is always, eh, who cares? Right. Then, you know, it kind of makes all of this meaningless. Like if you, if you have a desire to improve and, um, I really want to get to this particular point. This is something that's really important to me. If you have a desire to improve, um, you have to have the ability to be able to take criticism on in the right way. And you have to have the ability to be able to give criticism in the right way as well. Like someone telling you, Hey, this, you know, this beats really inconsistent. Um, your timing kind of sucks. You've got to work on that. That doesn't mean you suck. That means, Hey, your timing's bad. Like fix it. Um, and so I think you're right when you say that social media has a lot of, um, like there's a more of a tendency to just say the most positive thing. Um, when the most positive thing isn't necessarily relevant, um, or even useful. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. I think shuffling is weird now. Um, and that's not a back in my day, it was better. Um, it's more of a, I just find the way that some, I find the way that the community functions kind of odd. Um, because I don't think that the way that the community functions now is conducive to anybody getting better. Um, and look, this is going to sound like shade judging from a lot of videos I watch. This is bearing out because there's a lot of stuff that I say that's just, this is not like over time, people aren't really improving. And I think that the community as a whole is not at the level that I would think, um, given how, like there's so much information on shuffling now. If you think about 2006, when there was one shuffling video, right. And you have all of these people that still manage to learn it and still manage to get good. Now there are 3 trillion shuffling videos and you still kind of see like a lot of really similar mistakes and people going down the same sort of paths with the same kind of like brick wall, um, dead ends. And I feel like that's really avoidable. Um, but yeah, we can get into that. Well, I think it's interesting that you say that because I feel like a lot of people come across shuffling videos, you know, on social media or whatever, and they just decide that they're going to try it out and they're going to try to copy whatever they saw in the video. I don't necessarily think that people make the connection right away that they can actually dive into this on a deeper level, that this is something that they can actually study. You're definitely right about that. So I... I... I mean, I shouldn't quote myself. Um, you should definitely quote yourself. <laughs> um, there was a thread somewhere. I don't know if it's still around. Um, the thread title was, Did Anyone Learn to Shuffle by Themselves? And I gave an answer to this, which was, if I had to start all over again, how would I do it? And I think the first thing, I thought that I had written this down, but I didn't. Um so the first thing that I would consider when it comes to shuffling in general, which I'm just going to call rocking from this point, because um, that's what it is. It's not a move. Hey, everyone who's doing that stupid <laughs> tutorial. Look, I, I'm I'm not going to openly shit on a lot of things, but I'm totally going to openly shit on that tutorial because it's one of my least favorite things about rocking in 2020. Um, but... Um, the first thing that you need to do if you're going to shuffle and you care is decide if you care. Um, so uh, you and I are having a conversation the other night about TikTok um, and the fact that shuffling is really good. Shuffling is really big on TikTok. Now, I'm 38. I'm, I have a TikTok account so I can view TikToks. 
I'm never, ever, ever going to post a TikTok. It's just not a platform that's built for me. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm well aware of that. Um, TikTok as a platform is not really built for like hard kind of study. It's like TikTok is Vine with music and slightly longer. Um, so you have, what's the, like the maximum length on a TikTok video? It's like a minute or something like that. Um, I don't know. I don't have TikTok. Um, and I think that if the sole purpose of you wanting to dance is that you want to make videos on TikTok, you want to make stories on Instagram, um, you want to have a Snapchat story, whatever, that's fine. Like, if that's all you want to do, right, no one should judge that. No one should say you're not dancing for the right reasons. No one should say anything about it. But converse, like, the thing that goes along with that, if you then interact with shuffling in a slightly deeper fashion, which is I want to know more about it, you can't expect people to interact with you in the same way that they interact with you on those platforms because legitimately on TikTok, on Instagram, and all of those sorts of things, these are not platforms that are built for commentary. They're platforms that are built for reactions, which is, hey, that was awesome. Smiley face, love heart, sad face. Like that's kind of the point of those things. And it doesn't go beyond that. And so I think like that's, it's totally reasonable if that's all you ever want to do. Um, when you step outside of those platforms to places that are slightly more involved in shuffling in that slightly deeper level. So YouTube being one of them, Reddit is probably the main one now. Um, cause Reddit has basically replaced forums. Um, so Reddit is probably the main one. You shouldn't react in the same way. Hey, that was cool. Who cares? Like that's, you've said nothing effectively. And if that's all you want and that's all you expect, then I'm not sure what the value is of posting to platforms like that. So I think the first thing that everybody needs to do when they're deciding to get involved in shuffling is who are you? Why are you doing this? And again, there are no wrong answers to that question. If you want to be the best like no one ever was, cool, you can. If you quite simply, hey, I enjoy this. Here's a minute of me rocking out to my favorite song. Sick. Glad you're here. Have some fun. Whatever. Right? Um, so that's the first thing. I think it's really important for everybody to appreciate who they are and what they want to do. If then you decide, well, I'd like to be better. I'd like to be involved. I'd like to care more about all of this. Then maybe the first thing that you need to do is develop a skin, right? Because you are going to suck for a while. And if all of these forums are being used in the way that they should be used, you will get people like me that will step into threads like that and go, hey, man, appreciate that you're trying. Here are the nine things that were terrible about this, right? And you've got to be able to take that on and go, okay, I know what to improve now. Or, you know, I know these things to aim at. Or when you're asked a question to begin with, I mean, I have thoughts about posting videos after shuffling for three days, but if you're going to post that video, ask the right question, go in there and saying, here's my running man. What can I do? Well, here's, here's a place you can improve. Here's a place you can improve. Here's a place you can improve. As opposed to, I've been dancing for a couple of minutes. What should I fix? everything you've been dancing for a couple of minutes what did you expect to happen um i have a feeling i'm going to come off really negatively in this podcast or just realizing there's a half hour in which is hilarious there's a difference between being negative and being honest okay i hope everyone out there realizes that 
<laughs> I mean, I think that's how that's how it is with criticism as well. There's a difference between being negative and and being honest. Yeah. There's a difference between giving someone like positive love and giving someone tough love. And we all need both of those things. So someone being honest with you might not be exactly what you wanted to hear, but it might be what you need to hear. I think people need to be more open to that because without being open to that, um, that criticism and that outside objective eye looking at what you're doing and telling you ways that you can improve, you're going to slow down your own progress. You're only getting in your own way. So the best framing device I've ever heard for something like that is loving like a child versus loving like an adult. Um, it's funny. The, the phrasing I heard for that was in terms of patriotism, but let's just co-opt that for a second. Um, yeah. Like children, we think about how children love their parents, right? A child loves their parents. A parent is God at that point parent can do nothing wrong like they are the titan of their universe they are infallible they're unbelievable they're the biggest person ever my dad can beat up your dad all of that kind of stuff right like it's just this perfect relationship when it functions correctly as it should when you become an adult and your parent is also an adult start to look at them a little bit differently which is hey, they can't do math in their head. Or whatever particular thing you point out that you start to see flaws. So my mom's 70. She's not amazing at technology. <laughs> right? Like, it's it's a really simple thing. And it's not a, it's not a slight. It's not a... It's not kind of a, a value judgment. It just is what it is. She's not... She's not built to handle technology in the modern world. She doesn't have a TikTok account. She's never going to. If she does, that'd be King Strange. Um, but you kind of need to approach anything that you really want to get better at in a similar sort of fashion, which is being critical isn't being negative. It's just being critical. Um, and... If someone is critical to you, I mean, you can tell the difference. There's a difference between someone saying that sucks and you suck, right? Those are two very, yes. those are two really in very different statements. And the presence of the word suck doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. You just need to be able to appreciate the difference. Um, so yeah, once you get past um, deciding who you are and then sort of picking the platforms appropriately. Um, I think you get to something like maybe you don't try to do everything at once. Um, and fundamentals are good. And I did sort of lay that part out there that I think a lot of modern tutorials are bad. Um, and this seems like a perfect time to talk about that. Yeah, let's dive in. Um, so I think that social media, as you've said, kind of warps the way that people interact with everything and rocking is no different. It's kind of this, it's a race um, to, I think it's like the, the biggest move wins is what I tend to find. And you know, this is a really good segue into cutting shapes, um, which I will get to immediately after this. I think there's a lot of tendency to, you watch a video, you see people doing all of these moves, and instead of breaking those moves down into their components of, here is a running man, here is a shuffling step, here's a kick, here's a spin, all this kind of stuff, and then going, I'm going to learn each of these what people do is they try and just learn all of it. And if you have no basis to begin with, with learning all of these moves, trying to learn all of these moves at once is just a really easy recipe to just be a messy trash dancer, right? It's just not, your moves will be sloppy. Um, your, understanding of those movements will be much like 
it will be greatly diminished on where it should be. You'll constantly be thinking about how all these moves work because you don't understand any of them. And I know everyone loves dancing to their favorite song. Your favorite song is probably too fast for you in the beginning. Like no matter what your favorite song is, unless it's like, that's so true. Unless, that's so true. Unless it's like some 80 BPM thing. But um, <laughs> if you're dancing to regular old, I think most people dance to house music now um, mm-hmm. or like various versions of house. Um, it's like 128 BPM. It's too fast for you in this, in the beginning. Right. Especially if you're going to try and do shuffling, like, Running man, running man, shuffle, running man, kick, jump in the air, kick a field goal, I don't know, whatever it is you're going to do. <laughs> um, if you're going to try and do all of those moves, at least one of them is going to be terrible. Um, so stop. I think I broke Cisco. Well done. <laughs> this needs to make the cut. So you really got me with kick a field goal. <laughs> yeah. I mean... And again, this is more me laying the groundwork for cutting shapes. I should put this out there. I don't I don't hate cutting shapes. It's mm-hmm. gonna sound like it, but we'll get to that. Okay. Um <laughs> right. so yeah, I think if you're if you're trying to take on too much too quickly, this is not gonna go well. No no good comes from that. So you gotta slow down. Um Look, I am a musician in my spare time, so I'm a huge fan of metronomes. And we all live in the age of literally every person having a smartphone, every person in the developed world anyway. Download a, download a metronome app. Um, take the metronome, take it down to the lowest setting, which is like, I don't know what they are. On, on my music software, it's 20. That's probably too slow. But, like, start at 60, right? Like, one one beat every second, right? And do the moves, do the move, not even the moves, like start with one, start with a running man. That's like the basis of modern shuffling, whatever running man you choose to start with that, start at 60, um, get completely comfortable with every single step, do it to the point that you don't have to think about it. Bump it to 62, go again, bump it to 64, you keep going and you keep going until, I don't know, what's the fastest music anyone dances to now? Like 155, probably like the, and that's on the upper end. That would be like hard style I would hate. Um, but yeah, like that's probably where you get up to. Or you get up to the BPM of your chosen song. So if you listen to House, like 128. If you listen to Trance, to like 132. I know there's some trance that's 138. So you just get super proficient and then start over. Now I'm going to learn the T step or whatever your version of the T step is. Right. And you do it again. Start at 60, build, 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 build. Now you have two moves. You have them perfect. I would much rather watch a two move dancer that hit everything flawlessly than a person with 800 moves that hit nothing. Right. Like it's just, it's so much better. I'd love to watch it at a club. The person doing 800 moves that hits nothing is the person I would laugh at from this, from the side of the room. And all my friends would laugh at that person as well. It's be like, what the hell is this? Right. And again, going back to the first part, if you don't care, don't listen to anything that I'm saying right now. But I imagine if you don't care, you're also not watching this video or listening to this podcast, Mm. whatever we end up doing. Um, Yeah, you're not not listening to my voice right now if you don't care. And if you do care, then get good in this particular way. Or, like, just think about these as kind of ways to do it. Um, Mm. Once you have enough of these moves, I I was going to talk about tutorials. So... Let me jump in really quick just to build off of what you mm-hmm. said, though, because I thought it was really interesting how you are emphasizing so heavily to just 
learn one move at a time because one thing that I notice happening a lot is that people that are drawn to shuffling typically don't have dance experience whatsoever. So this is not only their first time shuffling, but it's their first time dancing or learning how to move their body in, in unusual ways. And because shuffling is so footwork heavy, I think a lot of beginners tend to only focus on the feet and they don't really make the connection that your entire body is involved in the move. So yes, you need to understand what your feet are doing, but you also need to know what your arms are doing. You need to know the line that your spine is making. You need to know what your face is doing while you're doing the move because training every part of your body is what it takes to create one clean version of that move. And if you rush through it and you only learn the footwork aspect of it, and then you go and you learn 800 other moves, then the whole time you're practicing just the footwork, you're basically ingraining really bad behavior or really bad habits into your dancing because you're practicing with like your arms flailing around in the air or like you're looking down at the ground constantly because you didn't teach yourself on the front end how not to do that, if that makes sense. And it's really hard to break out of those habits if you've been doing them for a long time. So I agree, it's absolutely essential to slow down while you're learning a move so that you can learn the entirety of it. So arms as balance are a like staple of people who are new at shuffling, right? And it's something I see that's way more prevalent than it used to be. Um, And it's just kind of, look, it's what happens when you take a shortcut because your balance, like, you should, in theory, be able to put your arms entirely by your side, kind of like a river dance, and do the running man. And it should have no bearing on you whatsoever. And the reason why doing something like that is important is because at some point, then you can actually move your arms to do stuff. Like, whatever the stuff is that you want to do. Like, I've seen all kinds of arm movements. Like, I heard you interview the other day. Um... No, Kim? the um, the bald dude, um, Zach. I, mean, I, I think it's Zach, but I don't remember his. Yeah, it was Zach. He does like all the liquid yeah. stuff. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, he's cool as shit. Shout so out to that Zach. kind of thing. Like I watched, he posted a video really recently, um, and I watched that video. I thought it was cool. Um, you don't get to be able to do that if you're fundamentals on the running man and the t-step and whatever other steps you choose to do you don't get to make those choices to be able to use your arms like that unless your balance is good now this isn't to say you should practice doing liquid or whatever and that's the only way to do it you can do whatever you want right like this is kind of again i'm sort of like teasing this cutting shapes conversation a little bit here um but you can do whatever you want. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, there's... Shuffling is not two moves anymore. Right? Um, I mean, it hasn't been two moves since, like, the 2000s. And even there, there were, like, kicks and people use their arms in different ways. Like, you... No shufflers would look the same as each other. And you kind of now have this really weird sort of homogeneity, which I'll admit people like me are at fault for in some ways. Um, You know, we all took video of Matt and then we all started dancing like him and now everyone looks like that or everyone that came from that era. But, you know, you have, you know, you certainly have homogeneity of upper body because people just, uh, just have their arms out for balance or they don't know what to do with anything. And every time they impact the ground, it creates a shock. And then their arms move like noodles. Like it's just sort of what happens. <laughs> or I see the, like, do you, do you know the inflatable men outside of the car wash that are like, yes. I mean, uh, I see that yeah. all the time. And I mean, look, that's typical. Like that's, we all look like that once. Like I looked like that a year or two in. You know, it's just what happens and you eventually just get past it. Um, 
but unless you know how, maybe you don't. Um, and again, that's one of those things that's really easy to correct in person and theoretically difficult to correct on YouTube with a bunch of tutorials that are sort of oriented in the wrong way. So I've teased this enough now. Let's get into it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, okay. I mean, no disrespect to anybody behind these tutorials, right? You People are doing what they think is the right thing. And look, if you make the attempt to make a tutorial at all, cool, right? Like the idea that you are attempting to teach somebody this dance, that you're trying to enrich somebody's enjoyment of it. I'm a huge fan of that. However, right. Orienting your tutorial towards here is a 17 move combo trash. Like, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I can't be any simpler than that. This is, this is a bad way to teach people stuff. I don't know, it's really simple. Like, I've gone on about it for the past like nine minutes at least. This doesn't teach you the fundamentals of anything. This teaches you a sequence of stuff. Now, I know where a lot of this comes from, right? Like if you look at more established dancers, if you look at popping, right? If you look at breaking, you look at a lot of these established dancers, a lot of the way that they learn is through this sort of like, we're going to do a drill, so to speak. So I've learned popping. I'm horrible at it. Don't ever ask me to do it, right? but I've been in popping classes before and a popping class will be a teacher will get up front and they'll give you a routine. They'll be like, we're going to hit here. We're going to hit here. We're going to hit in this other way. We're going to do a spin we're going to do something else. And the entire class will be based around learning that routine. And by the end of the class, the theory is you will have understood this routine and away you go. Now in person, that's fine because in person, the teacher can walk past you as you're doing this thing because everything in this tutorial, everything in this routine is designed to teach you a form. So if you're popping, it's about learning the boogaloo style. It's about learning to hit with your legs. It's about learning to do this. It's about learning how to spin on beats. It's about learning this glide. It's about learning all these particular things. And in person, a teacher can walk past you if you're hitting wrong and go, that's wrong. Let's correct it. Here's how you do it. So in effect, they teach you fundamentals as you go, right? So in a class, if it was a shuffling class, even if those things exist, I think they do, right? But if you have an in-person kind of thing and you want to learn some form of choreography, or you have someone who is much more experienced teaching you in person, fine, and is completely okay. If you are watching a single video that has these nine moves in a row in it, and they're like, I'm going to show you from the front, I'm going to show you from the back, all right, cool, see you tomorrow. What did you learn? You didn't learn the fundamentals of any of this because the people who are teaching you, in theory, are already good. And they don't go into all of the fundamentals of it because that's not what the tutorials are for. Right? So it's like, we're going to do a shuffle step here. We're going to do a kick here. We're going to spin. We're going to go five times off beat here. And then this will happen. Right? That kind of tutorial is built for a particular person. None of those people are watching it. Because the people that are watching it are the people that have been dancing for five days. And the reason I know this is because anytime I watch any video of someone, you can tell how they learnt to dance right? All of those bad lessons become really clear really quickly, right? Because you didn't learn what the fundamentals of the T-step or the shuffle step were. You didn't learn the fundamentals of the running man. You learn, I'm going to do the running man for three beats. I'm going to do a kick. I'm going to jump over here and something's going to happen, right? And that's just bad teaching. So modern tutorial makers, if anyone of you happens to be watching this video, Again, I mean, no disrespect to any of you personally, right? Go back and do basic fundamental tutorials. I know there's a bunch of them that exist. Like there's a, I don't know, there's like two 
incredibly famous people. There's like a bunch of shuffling videos that have like 2 million views, right? There's a few like really basic tutorials on there. Here's how you do the running man. Here's how you do this step and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a million of those tutorials. That's where you should start. It's always where you should start. You shouldn't be learning how to do everything that is advanced before you learn how to do everything that is basic, right? Because once you have this really good handle on the basics, you probably don't even need to learn the things that are advanced because you'll always, un you already understand how they work. Like all of the things that happen in shuffling, rocking, cutting shapes, all of that kind of stuff, they're all built from the same place, right? Which is, you know, you're going to do a running, if you know how to do the running man, you in effect have a starting point on how to do every running man. Because all you then do is go, okay, if I'm going to do the Charleston-esque running man, my feet are going to move this way, right? But you already know how to be on beat. You already know how your legs are supposed to function in a running man. So all you're doing is you're just taking a twist, right? If you're going to do the Malaysian running man, you know your feet have to arc up instead of going in a straight line, right? So all you need to do is make that change to your fundamentals. And, and what do you know? You know how to do something differently, right? It's... I just don't think that there is a massive amount of value in all of these like 17 move tutorials, because honestly as well, you, this is what contributes to making a bunch of dances that all look the same because nobody learned a bunch of fundamentals to then go, okay, I'm going to alter these. Now it's like combo a combo B combo a combo C. Right. And I just, I don't know. It, it creates a lot of bad outcomes in my view. And I think that if you watch enough shuffling videos, it's really clear that that's what's happening. Um, and it leads to a bunch of dances that could be a lot better. And I would love to see a lot better. Like one of my favorite pastimes is watching shuffling videos. I don't do it much anymore because I don't like watching unsatisfying shuffling videos. And there's a lot of them. And again, no disrespect for anyone who's trying, like go hard. I really want everyone to succeed, but I also just want to watch a bunch of good videos. Um, and you know, I'm like way too out of shape to make them myself. So, <laughs> um, someone do it for me, please. It'd be great. Um, I think one thing that I will say for the combo tutorials is that it is important to open people's minds up to the potential for different types of transitions. But the danger really comes from memorizing a specific combo and just drilling that into your muscle memory so hard that it becomes challenging to do anything but that combo. So yes, like watch these combo tutorials with an open mind to pick up inspiration and ideas, but I really think it's an unhealthy practice to try to watch them and memorize so, them just to add on to your so point. I agree with that. Um, and here's where I will get to like controversial take number two. Um, okay. Just, just number two. I mean, Is that all I we're on know. so far? I, controversial <laughs> take number two recently. Um, okay. this is cutting shapes fault, right? Now, look, I'm going to say a personal thing and then I'm going to say like a macro thing. So mm -hmm. if I were choosing to dance today, so let's say I'm going to put on my favorite song. What was it? It's probably that master craft song I linked you last night. Like the DANC series. DNC. That's, That's probably one. the song I would pick if I had to dance today, or it would be like a data remix of Minua Jacuzzi by Tefal. Um, so it's like a 128 BPM, four on the floor, electro, electro tune. Right. I really like the cutting shapes has opened the boundaries on what shuffling can be because those boundaries were closed for a really long time, right? Like people in my era, if you went back to sort of melbshuffle.com and you went back to all of that kind of stuff, the phrase, that's not shuffling, came off an awful lot, right? And I think that phrase is bullshit, right? Shuffling can be anything. 
No one has the right to be able to define what shuffling is or isn't. You just do shit and it's fine. Me personally, there's a lot of choices I wouldn't make, right? I wouldn't do 99% of what shuffling, of what cutting shapes does. That's personal, right? Now, it's my right as a dancer to do whatever moves I want. It's your right as a dancer to do whatever moves you want. It is nobody's right to define what the dance is because in reality, if we were really doing that, then none of us are shuffling anymore because shuffling now looks way different to how it did in like the 90s, right? Where everyone did the shuffling step almost universally. There was basically no running man. It was just like kicks. You've all seen it. It's people in fat pants in clubs, right? Just like gliding along, gliding (laughs) along floors. Everyone has seen those videos, right? And no shuffling looks like that now. Now, personally, we can talk about like how music has changed and that's why shuffling looks different now. And people that don't believe that aren't really students of history. So yeah, that's my personal take. I don't like cutting shapes for me, right? While I appreciate the good that cutting shapes has done. So it's decoupled shuffling from the rave scene, right? Which I think is kind of important because it means people can dance to whatever they want now. I have genuinely seen comments, forum comments in my time of shuffling is only done to hard, hard dance, right? One, that takes fucking idiotic to begin with because it used to be done in Acid House, right? So shut up. But also, like, the rave scene dances to a really specific kind of music in general, which is like this harder style of music. And I think that shuffling being taken away from that specifically and being given to everyone is good because it means you can dance to whatever you want. Uh, You danced to like a 100 BPM video, 100 BPM tune the other day. Um, I wouldn't dance to that, but I love that you can, right? And I love that all of these people get to be able to interpret this dance and do a bunch of stuff. It's really, really cool. But I think one thing that you can say is almost a categorical fact about cutting shapes is that a lot of people just see it as just moves, right? I'm just going to do 1,000 moves. I'm going to do 10,000 moves. I'm going to do, you know, this is the joke that I made the other night of like, you know, I'm going to do a spin. I'm going to do a shuffling step. I'm going to go back. I'm going to kick the World Trade Center. Like all of that kind of stuff is just ridiculous and it's crazy. Now, it's not to say that all these moves are bad because they're not. Like, a move is inherently just what it is. You can just do a thing. It's fine. But, like, when you start placing all of these things together at once, it just looks like a jumbled mess. And when I watch a lot of Cutting Shapes videos, I see a lot of jumbled messes. And I think a lot of that comes down to this combo mentality of, you know, I'm going to here is combo X, here is combo Y. And I don't, you know, from what I can gather, there's not a lot of people that have a massive amount of music theory knowledge. Not that that's a prerequisite. It does help. Um, but it's just people doing stuff. It's like dancing in a breakdown. Like, don't. It's not what it's for. And so you just see this sort of jumble as opposed to people really kind of crafting something. And I think that that comes down to a lack of understanding of these moves in general, which is coming back to that combo mentality. So it's sort of chicken and the egg. I mean, I glibly say this is cutting shapes fault. It's not really because this is Carly shuffling all over again, right? Where same sort of deal. It's just the running man's different. Yeah, I said it. It's the same dance, right? Controversial take number three, I guess. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe this is the right time for that. Hey, everyone who says that cutting shapes and shuffling are different dances, you are wrong. 
Okay. So let me take an example. If you had someone from, actually, you have told me this yourself. You told me you interviewed like old shufflers from Melbourne. And those old shufflers from Melbourne said they looked at the people from like 2006 and hated it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot of people that would watch shuffling from 2006. So like the, the kind of break point between overage shuffling and underage shuffling in 2006, like there's really two videos that are like symptomatic of it or sorry, illustrative of it. Is the word I mean, if you look at, there's a video called um, homemade hard style that Len made. Um, I think I linked it. I linked it on my Facebook the other day. I'll link it to you. Maybe you want to edit it in this spot, right? Um, you got homemade hard style, which is a bunch of people like dancing in their houses. They're all clearly over 18. These are people who went to clubs and they danced to hard style in this really particular way. And this is like music of the time from 2006, 2007. And then you also have like one of the most famous shuffling videos ever, which is Melbourne Shuffle Comp- Melbourne Shuffle Compilation Number Three, I think, by Jack Forty K, right? And you look at those two dancers next to each other. I defy anyone to honestly tell me that those dancers look exactly the same, right? Because they don't; they're completely different, right? The underage shufflers are all like stomping as hard as they possibly can right? They have almost no fundamentals for their shuffling step at all. They basically just run from place to place, right? They just do this hard running man. Then they like run to another spot and they do another hard running man. They run to another spot, right? At no point did any of us say, well, this is just a different dance now. They're not doing shuffling. They're doing stomp run, right? No, like, whatever. It was just, it was shuffling. Let's go a little bit further along, right? So everyone's favorite kind of dance, the MAS style, Malaysian style, right? If you watch sort of like the first Malaysian style dancer, which in my view is like Achik from Hard Style Republic. And look, for anyone that was there, for anyone who is really well versed in history, if I'm wrong about any of this, hit me up because I would love to be corrected. You look at some of that early Malaysian style dancing, right? And you compare that to 06 hard style dancing. It looks really different, right? Like to the point that some of the, some of the sort of ethos behind it is completely different. There's some stuff that's similar, like they're doing the running man, they're doing the shuffling step. But those steps look completely different. The arm movements look completely different. At no point did we go, well, that's not shuffling anymore, right? It's literally called Malaysian shuffling, right? You go further as you sort of like go across all of these eras, you move to what was happening in Russia with that being like the real basis for where a lot of this stuff came from in my view, right? And then you get all the way forward to like Kali shuffling, right? Which is just this Malaysian style running man that's, gigantic right and then a bunch of combos how is that different to cutting shapes Mm -hmm. the running man's different right there's more combos same dance right so i respect anybody like i understand that people always have a need to sort of like separate themselves be a little bit different we're forging our own path we're doing all this kind of stuff cool that's fine you if you want to do that it's okay this is mainly aimed at people who are consistently trying to divide these communities right as if you're in if you're in our shuffle and someone posts a cutting chase video, admittedly I've seen this less and less, right? But you still have the odd person being like, that's not shuffling, right? Yeah. And then, you know, again, it happens less in our cutting shapes, right? But you are doing the same dance, people, right? You're just doing slightly different versions of it. 
And here's a news flash. There are less of you now than there have been. Right? You should join forces. Right? Talk to each other. Learn from each other. People who are doing like, I don't know, shuffling, whatever you want to call it. People who are just doing basic shuffling. Hey, learn from the cutting shapes folks on what these kicks look like on how, how they approach their sort of thing that they do. Right. Because I watch a lot of shuffling videos now and they look very similar to shuffling videos that were made 10 years before. And like, I'm unsure how interesting that continues to be. Not saying that if you want to dance in a particular style, you shouldn't because you absolutely should. I dance pretty similarly to how I did in like 2010, right? Because I am a finished article personally, right? And like, I'm happy with that. Like I, I remember people commenting on like Hiltzy videos saying you dance exactly the same as you always have. And he's like, yeah, no shit. I want to. Right. So if you want to make these choices to dance a particular way, you can, but there's also a huge learning opportunity that everyone's leaving on the table here. Right. And as like degrading, it's like separating yourselves in a niche community. What's the point? Like there's 10,000 of you. Join forces, talk to each other, get like, go to meetups, go to clubs, do whatever it is. Well, when we can go to clubs and go to meetups, right? Rip that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but yes, when, post-pandemic. post-pandemic, when everyone can actually like be closer than 1.5 meters away from each other, right? <laughs> like, and look, even before that, get on a Zoom call, All right? Like, you know, I'm going to do it, do a dance, like, give some critique, all that sort of thing. You have, you live in the most connected age that ever has been, right? Use it. Like, this is the way that you bridge the gap between learning in person and learning off YouTube videos by talking to each other, right? Like, get get involved. Give real criticism. If I have to go into, a, like, another shuffling thread and see a video that is fine but not amazing to see a bunch of people go yeah okay what was the point of that statement like thanks be like hey you're doing good i really like this that's a much better way of saying that statement hey i really love your shuffling stuff i might steal that or your running man's super clean awesome that's great not just be like that's awesome keep going it's sort of like irrelevant Give real comments, mm. right? That sort of fell apart a bit there, but I think you get the point. No, I think it's important because so many people are wrapped up in just leaving a generic comment. And I think that really ties back into the fact that people are just trying to leave engagement on someone else's post so that that person will go look at their profile. Yeah. And it comes back to being the transactional relationship rather than like an actual productive relationship that everyone can use to benefit from it and improve from. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, look, there's a lot of building of brands in 2020, personal brands, all that kind yeah. of stuff. And look, I I've, do what you want at the end of the day. Like, do you, if you're going to take two messages away from what I've talked about, you can either take the message that I've talked about more generically, which is learn fundamentals and be critical in a good way. Um, and then the other message that you should also take is, hey, old man, shut up. Right? Like, this is a, hey, what? old man, shut up. Like, okay. Look, what does so that mean? I'm one dude. Okay? Like, Look, I had a name once. Okay, that's fine. I know a lot of people that were really, really well respected in the dance and they, you know, there's video of them saying, hey, this dude's cool. All right, fine. Right. Again, I think that reputation is useless. I think that people saying, oh, God, Shabugan's here in a thread is funny. Right. But at the end of the day, 
my word means exactly as much as any other person, right? You can take out of this what you want. The only reason why I'm talking at all is because I've been here before, right? Like I've seen a lot of these movements, like the, you know, I've never been the best dancer, but I think that I'm probably a pretty good historian or like technician, so to speak, on how to break a lot of this sort of stuff down in a really particular ways. And look, I think I, we have plans to do that at some point. Like I would really like to make the sort of tutorial content that I want to make, that I would love to see, that I think would be beneficial. I started doing that once um, and then stopped. Um, but yeah. Which I would just like to say when I first started shuffling, I saw your tutorial with the triangle and I had no idea whenever I first started talking to you that it was you that made that video and so just I like will, when it clicked, it blew so my I mind. I give a lot of credit to Len um, because obviously he edited, edited that video together and he shot it. It's also hilarious. There's a much fatter version of me, right? Which is really <laughs> inconvenient to be on to be on YouTube to live for all time and have a hundred thousand years. And it's very famous. <laughs> I don't know about very famous. Like it has an not insignificant amount of engagement, let's say. Um yeah, it's trippy and weird and it will never stop being trippy and weird. Um but <laughs> that is the kind of content that I think of. Um that is the kind of content that I would like to make because um I'm more interested in this sort of idea of how to learn. Like the, I don't think teaching, look, we could make, let's say, here's how to do the running man, right? Step one, feet apart. Step two, flamingo, whatever you call it. Step three, feet apart, repeat, right? Like I could tell you how to do the running man in three minutes. And it would be, it wouldn't be as good because obviously it's just my voice, but there's 3 trillion videos that teach you how to do the running man. There's 3 trillion videos that teach you how the T-step works. And you know what? There's some that are great, some that are bad. You'll find the one that sort of appeals to you and away you go, right? You don't need more of those videos. The sort of videos that I think people need is what's next? Like, why do I kick here versus kicking here? Right? Why do mm. I, like, what is, like, how do you structure a dance? Like, what is the sort of thing that you want to communicate? How do you listen to music? That's a topic I'm hugely interested in. Like, how do you listen to music? Because I think the more that you know about music, the better off you are when it comes to dancing. Right, like if you watch every single performance, I, I would encourage everyone to watch other dancers. Right, shuffling is young. Its community is really young. Its sort of law, so to speak, is really young. And sort of the way that people approach this dance is really young. Um, I would encourage people to watch like est established dancers, like popping and breaking and all of that kind of stuff. Not necessarily for moves, although you do see like a lot of top rocking in cutting shapes and you see a lot of the Charleston in cutting shapes and all that kind of stuff. So obviously going to study some of those dances to see where a lot of this came from is never a bad thing. But watching like a really incredible popping performance as an example gives you a real sense of what musicality can be like when you see someone hit perfectly on a beat and you see someone pause at the exact right spot, like when there is a lull in the music and then the next hit, they hit it perfectly and you see the crowd go ape shit. Right. And that thing, those moments are only created through musicality. It's this really clear relationship between the dancer and the song. And you can't get that if you don't really know how to listen to music, right? In the, in the right way to be able to communicate in the right way. Again, 
that's your choice. You don't have to. Like, if you, if all you hear in music is, you know, the kick drum and the BPM and you want to just keep dancing to it, go hard. It's fine. No problem with that whatsoever. I'd rather you stayed in time than not in time. But there are levels beyond that in terms of how you can approach these sorts of things that are really, really good and come with an under- a little bit more understanding about music. Those are the areas I'm super interested in and trying to find the right way to communicate to people. Yeah, I think that's so important. And I think also just the way that you talk about this highlights something that's very interesting to me, which is that as a creative person, a lot of times you'll choose one specific craft, but the people who are best at that craft are the people who take influences from other crafts and they find their zone, which is somewhere like in between those two crafts. So for you, you're super into making music, super into dancing. And so you're paying attention to the moves in a way that other people are not. And I think that's important for people to recognize, like you should not just be looking at videos of people on TikTok and taking all of your inspiration from that. You should open your mind to take inspiration from other areas, other sources and and other forms of creative expression as well. Yeah. I mean, whenever you talk about, I'll probably say it like this. There's no real reason to dance. Like, there's no point to it existing. Like, there's no anthropological need. It's not like we're um, peacocks and we're, like, spreading wings in order to mate. Like, that's not what this is about. (laughs) You can make... Not not always. always. You can kind of make an argument about, like, picking up women on dance floors or men if that's what you're into. Right? Like, it's, it's a thing. But... In reality, if you kind of boil down the reason for dance to exist, it doesn't have one other than it's just a way to express yourself. And, you know, like Caitlin just said, there's three trillion ways in the world. I should really use a new number. Four trillion ways in the world to express yourself. I mean, you do whatever you want. You can draw. You can do painting. You can... I don't, I don't know, whatever. I said this four trillion, I came out with two and ran out. It's good work. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> for, Good yeah, job, I'm, good job. I'm sick of this, clearly. Um, <laughs> yeah, talking is a way you can communicate and express yourself sometimes. But all of these things have, there's no intrinsic value to them. Which means there's no, which means the value of all of them is equivalent. So if you get really, if you look at a piece of, like, if you look at a piece of painted art and you see that there's a bunch of curves in there and you're suddenly really interested in curves, you then have the ability to be able to make your dance more curvy. Maybe you see straight lines and you're like, I really want to, like, make straight lines. And you start listening to music that is super robotic and regimented. So I'm just going to take the first song that comes to my head. It's like Du Hast by Ramstein as an example. Yeah. Right. So look, not a typical song that you would shuffle to, but has a really consistent beat. And every, there are every single um, segment of that song fits perfectly on a beat, it's been quantized to 100% of its life. And so that to me, when I just think about it, straight lines is what comes to mind. There's no curves at all. It's just like, it's like just everything is just really, really hard. And, you know, you're going to stomp in a particular way. You're going to move your arms in a really particular way. You're going to, to move the angles you move on are going to be really particular. You're not going to like sweep around or anything like that. You're just going to move to a spot and stomp. Like that to me is the level of musicality you can get to. If you really start to interface with music in this way. And I mean, look, there's kind of some of what I'm talking about sort of goes into sort of the difference between 
dancing in a club and maybe performing in some way, <clears throat> like um, dancing on a video. Dancing on video and dancing in clubs is an inherently different thing. Um, and being aware of that's important. But as a as an idea, this is pe- this is something that shuffling has never really thought about, or at least publicly. I'm sure there are people that have thought about this. Again, your Zach, I think, is a really good example of this is a person that thought really clearly about what they wanted to communicate in their last video. And whether you like the style or not, again, me personally, I thought it was great. Um, I really enjoyed watching that video. It's one of the few videos I've enjoyed watching in a, in a while. Right. Present company excluded. Um, <laughs> but I, I thought that was a really smart video. I thought the, the way he danced fit the style perfectly. I thought his balance was really good. I thought his fundamentals were really good. So if you're listening, like awesome. So that was great. Um, I think that that is a really, really tiny sliver of the levels of musicality that can exist. Right. And I think based on some of the stuff that I've seen on what people think musicality is, there's a lot of room here to be able to improve. Um, yeah. That's, there's so much, so much that can be done. And I think that a person sort of maybe even talking about like really basic music theory of like, here are beats, here are bars. Here's how this music tends to function. Here's the sort of stuff you should listen for. Things like that are just super simple ways that would improve. This is what turns good dancers into great dancers. Yeah. And one thing I see a lot is that dancers will be like, okay, I'm going to pause on this beat and that's my musicality and it's sick. And like, that is kind of sick, but you can definitely take it way deeper than that. Sometimes I even like to listen to a song and just think of like one word in my head that I think is descriptive of that song, like an adjective. And then I try to interpret that adjective with my body. And there's so many different ways that you can go with musicality. People just don't have that explained to them. So yes, you need to make a tutorial on this. The people need to hear your point of view. Um, (laughs) The people need it. You can't let the people down. The people. Um, Yeah, look, there are, there are some plans. Um, I mean, I've talked about it, obviously, with you. I've got a couple of friends that a lot of people would know um, that are, you know, interested in, in talking about some of this stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's something here. Right. And, look, I, I imagine this video is going to get posted in some threads um, on our shuffle or our cutting shapes. Hello, our cutting shapes. You and I are probably not friends right now. Um, but yeah, certainly, uh, that was, that was a joke. I have no problem with people in cunning shapes. Um, but the, yeah, if you have any thoughts on this or anything else, um, reply. Like I do read, I'm around, I do read stuff. I mean, especially during a pandemic, there's, we all have nothing but time currently. Um, so yeah, by all means, like. Even if your response is, fuck that guy, he's an asshole, right? Like, that's useful feedback because I will be in the thread to go, why? Right? And, like, if you're like, well, I didn't like this particular thing that you said, I'm like, hey, that's cool. That's something to think about. Um, You know, conversely, just like I've said, if you're giving, like, feedback to dancers, be critical, hey, I thought you were too negative about this particular topic. I think that there's more here than that. Okay, cool. I really enjoy that perspective. I I am a huge fan of conversation. Um, I'm a huge fan of pointed conversation that goes places. So by all means, if I've said a thing that um, you feel is wrong, challenge the point of view. You know, let's, what do they say? Let's chop it up. Um, you know, let's get involved. Let's have a bit of a dialogue here. Um, 
because I would like to see shuffling be better in general. Like I would love to see, you know, for everyone that is getting involved in this and really has a, like a real desire to be good. I think that kind of makes me sad a little bit that I have an easier, I had an easier time of it than you do because I was surrounded by incredible dancers all the time. Like dancers were way better than I was. And I could just watch and just be like, Oh, that's a, that's a thing that's cool. Right. And I could just like, I could go talk to them about it or they could come talk to me about particular things. Or, you know, we would all leave a club and just like be talking to each other constantly on forums or anything like that. Like, I know that that kind of stuff is difficult to replicate now. It's not impossible. And I think the more that we sort of focus on getting together and having these conversations and beginning these dialogues and, you know, really kind of getting deep into this, like if for nothing else, I would love to see the quality of um, conversation I'd love to see the quality of criticism on videos improve. Like if nothing else, if you're going to, you know, I've talked about messages you can take out of this. If you really want to take a message out of this, the next video that you comment on, make it a good one, right? Say, here's what I liked. I liked this. I liked this. I liked this. Make it three things. Here's what I didn't like. I didn't like this. I thought this could have been better. Hey, I think you dubbed this song in late, so it's really clear you're not dancing to it. Hey, you were off beat like heaps here. Um, maybe don't do that. Right? Or, you know, your your running man's a little bit inconsistent. Like, if you want, you know, go find me on Reddit or whatever and read some of the comments that I've made to people. You'll have to dodge a bunch of comments about AMD and wrestling, but you know, there's some shuffling stuff in there. Look at the sort of comments that I'm giving to people, right? If you think that that kind of com that kind of criticism style is good, then there's no reason that you can't do it too, right? You may not have sort of the basis or whatever that I have after doing this forever, and you may not break it down the same way. But every single viewpoint is valuable, right? Just if it's actually valuable and it's not just surface level, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's just shit. Right. That's it. I think, um, I mean, for this one, we're probably going to do more of these, right? Yeah. Well, I do just want to add on to that. Like for anybody listening who is unsure of how to give criticism. And so you don't say anything because you're afraid of saying the wrong thing. Giving criticism is a skill that you can learn just like everything else, but you have to practice. So, you know, maybe just start out with leaving a comment that points out one thing, be very specific about the one thing that you're commenting on and then justify your position don't be rude. Don't be a dick, you know, but just be objective about it. And then if somebody wants to give you feedback on your criticism, if somebody, you know, starts a conversation with you over it, then you'll be able to understand how that impacted them. And you can improve the way you give criticism next time. So don't let the fear of saying the wrong thing hold you back from saying anything at all, because otherwise you're never going to get better. And then how are any of us going to get better if nobody's giving criticism? Yeah. Like, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, um, so just to, to pile on that a little bit, um, so I remember just this generic story. Um, there was a while on melbshuffle.com, um, where there was this movement towards uniqueness over everything else, um. And this sort of move towards uniqueness actually got in the way of people being good and like really focusing on their fundamentals and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that was really interesting about it is when you would comment on someone's video and they'd reply back with, this is why I did that. That's also open, 
right? Like the idea yeah. of, hey, I didn't really think that this running man worked here. Oh, really? Like, here's why I did that. And, you know, this, don't be a dick about it. That's just my style, bro. Like, that's useless. That doesn't help anybody. <laughs> right? But stuff, right, but right. stuff like, oh, right. Okay, thanks. But here's here's what I was going for here, which then opens up someone else to go. Oh, okay. Um, I think it would be better if you did this. Maybe this is a better way of communicating something like that. Oh, I'd never thought of that. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Everyone, sorry, everyone in that interaction leaves better. The dancer, yeah. the dancer gets a little bit of feedback that they can then use, and the commenter gets some feedback because they get a consideration that maybe they wouldn't have had before because you've given this feedback going on. Oh, well, this is what you were trying to do. And it's like, well, no, I was trying to do that. So, Oh, I didn't actually think anyone would try to do that. Um, if I were trying to do that, I'd do this. And like, this is, this is the value of really useful critical, critical commentary. It's, great for everyone involved it's great for the community as a whole try it please i'm begging you right i would like to read valuable comments on videos i'm really 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 tired of reading that was great because right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean i can be a broken record about this stuff i i, I realize that this isn't like an old man screaming into the void um, but no, not at all. It's, it's honest. It's applicable. It's relevant. It's helpful. I think a lot of people need to hear it. There's not enough people talking about this aspect of it. I mean, I went to art school, so learning how to give criticism was one of the first things that that we even learned there. And not everybody has that experience, so I think it's important to pass this message along. Yeah. And well, that is ninety minutes. Wow. I think that's a lot. That's... Yeah. In for you. I mean, that went by pretty fast. We should do this again. Okay. Thank you um, for giving me the opportunity to rage about shuffling <laughs> and occasionally say something that may be borderline useful to somebody. Um, well, thank you for just taking the time to sit down and give us your thoughts. No trouble. It's awesome. Maybe next time I'll have a camera. Well, no guarantees. I'm, there's no value out okay. of people seeing my dough. <laughs> all right till next time Adios. bye everybody